Number 15, James Buchanan, Democrat, 1857 to 1861, 65 years old, from Pennsylvania. James Buchanan is often ranked at or near the bottom in these polls to determine the best and the worst of the American presidents. I think the reason that he's often rated near or at the bottom is because actions that he took during his presidency probably hastened the coming of the Civil War. He did fail, but I think he failed with integrity, and I think he needs to be given credit for at least trying. I think that he should be maligned, but we've got to get it right. Really, what he deserves his last place rating for is near treason. James Buchanan was one of the most politically accomplished presidents America has ever had. He had been a congressman, foreign minister, senator, and secretary of state. What he'd achieved in life was due to hard work and a fastidious nature. He would stay up late at night to attend the smallest of details. Buchanan was different in another way. He never married and is often referred to as America's only bachelor president. There are folks in the United States who say that uh, James Buchanan is our first homosexual president. The allegation arose from the intimate friendship he had shared with Franklin Pierce's vice president, William Rufus King, a man he had lived with for 16 years. There really is not a lot of hard evidence. There are three or four mentions at the time of Buchanan and his wife or Aunt Nancy. These two men are Aunt Nancy's. Now, King was part of this circle of dandies, they called them. And there certainly was some sense in this group of men that they were having homosexual relations. It's a very hard to make any kind of determination about something like that, even about someone living today, let alone someone living in the 1850s. Buchanan had his charming niece, Harriet Lane, serve as his White House hostess. Since Harriet wasn't Buchanan's wife, she was called the First Lady, a term coined to describe her role. While Harriet presided over social life at the White House, Buchanan presided over a house rapidly dividing. His decision to endorse the Constitution written by the pro-slavery settlers in Kansas made Buchanan appear to be a supporter of the South and a traitor to the North. The idea that the president will try to force slavery into a territory where it's clear that a majority of the settlers don't want it completely discredits his administration in the eyes of large numbers of Northerners, including Northern Democrats, not just Republicans. Everything that uh, James Buchanan does for the last part of his administration is so pro-Southern that he does not do in the classic presidential oath preserve and defend and protect the United States. Ultimately, Buchanan's management of the battle in Kansas did nothing to settle the slavery issue. It only made it worse. Slavery, couched in the mantra of states' rights, was now the defining issue in the historic election of 1860. On November 6th, 1860, Abraham Lincoln was elected president. It was now only a matter of months before the South would lose its ally in the White House. In anticipation of an anti-slavery president, South Carolina seceded from the Union on December 20th, 1860. As a lame duck president, James Buchanan denied the legality of secession, but didn't do anything to stop it. Was he being weak at that moment and indecisive? Probably. Was he scared to death? Certainly. Did he have a sense that this was an incredibly dangerous moment? Definitely. Within weeks, six more states left the Union, and eight slaveholding states sat on the fence, becoming border states. On February 9, 1861, the Confederate States of America, now composed of seven states, elected Jefferson Davis as their new president. One month later, Buchanan's presidency came to an end. 
He was tremendously relieved to set aside the burden of office and hand it over to Lincoln. On his last day, Buchanan said to Lincoln, if you are as happy to be entering the presidency as I am to be leaving it, then you are a very happy man. Unknown to America at the time, James Buchanan had quietly purchased several slaves and sent them north, granting them their freedom.